Hi guys, Dave here for Brighton & Hope Guitar Lessons. We are looking at the Joe Walsh solo from Eagles Hotel California. So I've already done a whole video on how to play the Don Felder part, the first part of the solo. This bit's gonna be on what I just played, the middle part of the solo, and I'll also link you to another video which I'm gonna do, which is all the harmonized stuff at the end. So I've got my trusty Telecaster, grab your guitar, let's get stuck into it. Okay guys, so, this solo starts with this lick. That is almost exactly the same lick that Don Felder finished the last solo with, which obviously is no um, accident. He's done that on purpose because music is all about theme and variation, so that's a really nice head nod um, to where he's picked up from. He's taken that last lick and gone, okay, I'm continuing from there, so I'll start with it. So this is kind of a classic rock and roll uh, pentatonic vibe going on. So I tend to do three fingers in a row here, but this first finger is not really supporting this bend. This bend here, it's actually all really those two. So if you haven't experienced this before, um, I mentioned on the first Don Felder video about bending techniques and how kind of the three finger supported bends work, but we don't want to be using this first finger very much it's just kind of resting it's marking this area and as you can see i bend up and i go straight over to the b string and then my little finger jumps out to do 10th fret like that um, and that's because we want to be able to kind of do that bend and come back and forth in fact i say come back and forth once you're there you probably want to stay there because some of my students I've seen kind of trying to come back and forth and they're just making a mountain out of a molehill. Um, once you've marked this bit, because you know you're going to stay, you should just stay. So. Okay, one more time at a reasonable speed. Um, in terms of the picking for this lick, I tend to prefer alternate picking there. Up, down, up, up. Well, it's not quite alternate picking. So I'm doing up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. But I've also seen it picked kind of almost exactly the reverse of that. Um, my general feeling on picking technique is you should do whatever feels comfortable as long as what you're not what you're doing doesn't come from laziness or doesn't come from bad technique. So most students have a stronger down pick and it's quite common to see them trying to down pick every little thing. Um, if your up pick is really weak, then there are some great alternate picking exercises out there that are going to help you with that. But you do need to start strengthening it because at the moment. It's kind of like being a tennis player and you only have a forehand, you don't have a backhand. Okay, so um, you need to be able to up pick at least like 30, 40% as well as you can down pick. Okay, so next lick. Uh, oh, there's the end of this lick. Then we've got. So. Uh, Here, we're bending from nine to 11 on the G and coming back down without picking and then pulling off again without picking. So this is one pick, then picking again on nine, picking on uh, seven, then picking nine and bending up a tone. And then just shoot up the G string to get that whoop sound that is on the record. So, uh, all together the first lick. Lick two. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we're here on the 11th fret of the G and we're bending up, I think it's a tone and a half. Yeah. 
Then we're coming back to nine and hammering on. Drag back to seven. And I like to use my middle finger for this one, which is kind of weird because it would make sense to use the ring finger. You are obviously welcome to do it like this. It makes no odds. However, maybe the advantage to doing it with the middle finger comes from the fact that lick three comes hot on the heels of this one. Uh, sorry. So that's immediately off the bat of the other lick. So here we're bending from 10 to the pitch of seven on the top E string. So you, you can hear they're the same pitch. So we're going 10 up a tone, 10, seven, and then kind of doing the same trick again. But this time we, we reach out for the top E at the 10th fret. And then we're gonna pick and slide. I'll do that one more time really slow. Um, I've also seen that lick kind of done. The jury's out, really. Um, to me, it sounds more like this. But, you know, what's the difference? Not, not a huge amount. As long as you're kind of getting the, the shape of it, you're good. Uh, so that is lick three. So as I was explaining with lick two, you have to go straight into this bit. So maybe that's why I prefer to use the middle finger because otherwise if I was landing on that, then I have to hop. So that actually makes a lot more sense. Ah. Okay, and with that chromatic run actually while we're here, I personally prefer to go ring finger, middle finger, first finger, and down one more with the first finger. Obviously you could do it with four fingers. I tend to find four fingers with pentatonic stuff uh, sounds a bit clunky, just sounds a bit flat. There's a bit more of a natural vibrato with, with three fingers. I don't know, that's what I think. Okay, we're on to lick four now. Uh, so let me play it for you. I'm gonna do the cut off there because the next lick again comes hot off the back of it, so. So what's happening here is we're basically moving to E minor pentatonic shape one. Or at least there's no reason to believe that we're not moving to E minor pentatonic shape one or G major pentatonic shape five, whichever way you want to think about it. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're over a G minor here. Um, so that would make sense. So we're at 14 and we're bending to the pitch of 12. Then we're at 15, bending to the pitch of 12 on the top end, coming back to 15. So that is. And we immediately slide forward a tone to finish. And what's going to happen immediately after that is you're going to get a lick, this lick. So here we're at 17, and notice I've got three fingers in a row again, because again this just really helps. I'm bending up a tone, then I'm going 15, 16, 17 on the top E, and then a tone bend there. Oops, sorry, excuse me. And what we're doing here, you're bending up on the E, coming across to the B, and it's kind of like a pre-bend. But in the heat of the moment, who knows what's gonna happen. So I just tend to find with this lick, 
best to just jump over there onto the B and hope for it. Just catch it in some way. If you catch it flat, bend it up as quick as you can. If you happen to get a pre-bend in, which I feel like that kind of was, then great. Um, but it's all going to be over in a flash, so don't obsess over catching a pre-bend. Just do your best to bend up on the top E and immediately take that bend over to the B. Um, then we've got... Now, this lick, we're going, but with bends, so we're going up a tone, we're going, so what happens is we're going to bend up, catch the top E, and then I think to me, some people just say just vibrato. I, when I listen to the recording, I think there's a little dip. Like that, and back up. Now, um, when I teach this, it's I say to my students all the time, it's got to be basically like, almost like a microtonal dip, like the tiniest amount. If, if you're bending the string at 70% pressure, you're literally backing off to 68% pressure and you'll find that the tension of the string just pulls you down just a tiny bit. Like that, and then back up, and then just renew the pressure. And back off here to 15, and then we've got this. Now, um, I'm not gonna just switch guitars, because I'm trying to use all the, do all the Don Felder stuff on my um, Gibson so that you can kind of see the difference. But at the end of this lick, Don Felder comes in and does the with that. So I'm going to show you now. We've got uh, the end of Joe Walsh's solo. We get to the, oh, that was a bit sharp. We get to there, and then he's going to go, and at the exact same time, Don Felder on his guitar is going to go. Okay, so that is how Joe Walsh's solo ends. Um, so his last lick. And at that, we've got with uh, Don Felder on his guitar. Obviously on his guitar, not on Joe Walsh's guitar. That would be a world gone mad. Um, right, and then I'm going to tuck into the end of this um, some of Don Felder's stuff because what happens here is you've got Don coming in to do this lick. Okay, that's a pretty tough one, that one. Try and practice this with clean tone. You can hear I'm pretty clean. I should be pretty clean. Um, because yeah, if you put it on like, if you slap your Mesa Boogie on with tons of gain, then yeah, you're going to be like, awesome, no worries. But you want to be able to do this with finger control. So here we've got, we're at 10th fret, uh, sorry, first finger is at 10th fret. Uh, I'm marking um, 13 here with my middle finger behind on 12 on the beat. And coming back to 10. So we've got two of those. And then I like to put my ring finger here as a preparation. So this is the 11th fret. My first finger is still on 10 on the top E. So I'm on 11 on the G. Okay, now we don't want them ringing out together. This is just preparing you to do the lift. Because we have to transition across ourselves in a pretty nasty way. Okay, so this is the bit that I want you to practice clean. Okay, so you can turn this into a little bit of an exercise. We've got three notes in a row and then slide back. Okay, so what you're going to need to do 
is you're going to need to maintain tension throughout. In fact, I advise most of my students to ramp up the tension. Imagine it's like a wave breaking, okay, so that by the end of it, the tension is actually, you're pressing harder than you were at the beginning. Okay, and so I want you to do this by, by just taking a moment to do this. And then this. And what you're trying to get is this feeling that like, this finger, by the time you get to the first finger, you're pressing harder and harder by the, by the end of it. So you're going sort of medium, harder, harder still. And then when you drag, you're kind of skating over and squeezing when you get here. Okay? So you can't squeeze really hard when you drag. Well, you can. But it will sound a bit like, like that. So what we want to do is we want to kind of skate over and then squeeze when we arrive. Okay. Uh, so take some time to practice that. Practice it nice and clean. And then... We're going to go 9, 8 on the D with the ring finger. And I like to use my little finger for this last bit. 9 on the top, on the B. And just slide it a tone. Okay. It is tough. Well, especially if you play it wrong. Okay. Last lick that I'm going to look at in this video, uh, Joe Walsh now is going to do the last lick before they harmonise, and it goes like this. Great lick. Uh, a lot of people have had trouble with this when I've been teaching it recently, so um, uh, it is obviously quite complicated, although it sounds simple. So here we're going, um, we're bending up a tone. And we're doing that kind of Doppler effect, slow release while we pick. And then we're going to go pick, pull off, 12 on the B. And then we're going to go 12, 10, 12. Do that slowly because people hate for some reason. They, they, they don't like it. So make sure you go. Okay, um, and then we've got this bit, which I really love. Now to me, that feels right, that sounds right. So we're doing 10 on the B. I use my middle finger on the 11 on the G. I'm gonna pull off to my first finger and I'm gonna slide back. So I'm gonna go. I'm landing on seven. And then I put my middle finger back on nine, pick and slide. And I'm not leaving it hanging on, I'm doing, that's kind of country 101. I'm just doing that. But you can, if you want, leave that, leave it hanging on a bit more. Like that. Um, okay, so that is the end of the Joe Walsh solo. There is a bit of Don Felder stuck in there, just slyly. Um, but that's everything. I'm going to link a video of me playing all those parts slowed down so that you can play along. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, feelings, anything that kind of occurs to you. Uh, and stay tuned for the last harmonized bit, which is where things get really freaky. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave for Brighton Home Guitar Lessons. See you soon. Thanks. Bye.